Now this is the first part of the first lesson. I want to introduce you to a couple of linear time algorithms, meaning that these are algorithms that take a linear amount of time in the worst case um, as a function of their input size. The corresponding reading from the textbook is uh, section 2.4. I want to uh, remind you that we will be looking at some slides that um, are from the textbook and they are copyrighted, but we can use them for educational um, reasons. So the first uh, problem is, uh, suppose that I ask you to compute the maximum of n uh, numbers. Suppose that the numbers are in an array, a1 through an, and you just need to find the largest of these numbers um, efficiently. So if you think about it for a minute, it's uh, very simple. We can just have a for loop that goes through the numbers one by one. We maintain a variable, call it max, that has the largest number we have seen so far. Whenever we see a number AI that is larger than the max, then we set max equal to AI. Let's now uh, examine the running time of this algorithm. The running time will be denoted by t. Of course, it is a function of n in this case. And it is important to remember that uh, we're always interested in the worst case. So in the worst case, in each of these uh, iterations of the for loop, we will perform both uh, this operation as well as this operation, right? So we will have one operation for the initial assignment of the max variable plus n minus 1 iterations of the for loop times uh, two uh, operations because we have these two different operations happening within each iteration. Of course, you know, this is um, a function, um, a linear function of, of n, right? And uh, this is why we say that this uh, algorithm is a, a linear time algorithm. Now, let's uh, look at another example of a linear time algorithm. In this case, I give you two lists, A and B. They are both increasing. And we want to create a, a list C, which uh, is also increasing, uh, is the merging of the lists A and B. For example, if A is um, and B is the output list C would be... So if each of the lists A and B have n elements, the list uh, C has two times n um, elements. So how uh, can we compute uh, C efficiently without having to sort these uh, 2n uh, numbers, exploiting the fact that uh, A and B are already sorted? If you think about it for a minute, it's very simple. Um, this is the list uh, A, and uh, it has n numbers, and this is the list uh, B. It also has n uh, numbers. We can have a pointer i initially set to 1 and the pointer j uh, initially set to 1 as well. And in each iteration of the loop, we're comparing this ith element of the a list uh, with the jth element of the b list. So if um, this uh, ai element is uh, smaller or equal to the uh, bj element, then uh, we copy uh, the AI element to the output list C. Right? This is the first thing that we do. The second thing that we do is we have to uh, increase um, the pointer I so that it points to uh, the next element. And we keep doing that until uh, one of the two lists is uh, empty. Suppose, for instance, that the list um, A uh, has, been, uh, uh, has become empty, meaning that all of the elements um, have been moved, all of the n elements have been moved already to the list C. So in that case, we take the, 
remaining elements of uh, the other list and we just copy them to the output because we know for sure that they are larger or equal than all of the elements that have been already uh, copied to the output list. So um, we have the pointer sign and j, we have this while loop, right, where as long as uh, both of the lists are not empty, we compare the ith element of a and the jth element of b. Uh, if the uh, former is smaller or equal, then we uh, move it to the output list and we increment um, the pointer i. If um, the uh, smaller element is bj, then we do the same thing for bj and we increment the pointer j. As long as both of the lists are not empty, when one of the lists becomes empty, then um, we just copy the remainder of the non-empty list to the output. Okay, so let's now um, ask what is the running time of this algorithm. Uh, again, uh, we're interested in uh, the worst case. So the running time is of course a function of n. Um, as you can see, we have a couple of operations up here that are uh, performed at initialization. Uh, the while loop is executed um, how many times? Um, in every iteration, we're moving one number from either A or B to the output list C, right? So the number of iterations uh, of this loop is um, upper bounded by 2 times n, the total number of elements. And uh, in each iteration, um, we are basically uh, performing uh, a comparison, a, a move operation, and we increase a, a, a counter, right? So um, if we are counting every single operation here, we can say that this is 2 times n um, times 3, right? The three operations that I mentioned. And then, of course, the... Uh, append uh, statement, this last statement, um, again, um, in the worst case, we will have to uh, move all n elements of one of the two lists, right? So this is uh, n additional operations. I, again, I want you to understand that this is uh, an upper bound. So instead of writing an equality here, I will change it into a, an inequality right? Um, the running time will be at most um, this much. We can of course uh, simplify this if you like. Uh, this is a linear function of n again, right? So this is why we refer to this algorithm as a linear time algorithm as well. 